right. So Conley Partners appreciates this opportunity to present our plans for the redevelopment of the former Holy Family School at 6 Del Pre Avenue. We propose 27 one bedroom senior apartments that would be deed restricted affordable for perpetuity. Our firm has a growing portfolio of uses and experience. This includes a physical and financial turnaround of Springgate Apartments at 52 Hanaway in Rockland through a special limited partnership with the Rockland Housing Authority. Representative David DeCoast offered his early support for this project and appreciates the programs and services that we would be able to extend to the new community, otherwise not possible at a site of this size. We thank him for uh, joining us on this session and for the meetings, including the Board of Selectmen and other with other town officials last month. We also have this support of the parish council and their pastor, Father Hickey. They connected with the new community purpose for this building and appreciated that we would be preserving the historic character of the building. We've taken this on as part of our work and will soon be submitting state and federal tax credit applications with the support of the historical commission. And this combines with layers of state and federal financing. We also have a syndicator in place to bring community focused investors to the table. We're going to start our presentation with Seeger Architects and then follow with Joe Armstrong of MCR, our tax credit consultant, to review the affordability concepts of our plan. So with that, I'll hand things over to the Seeger team. Can you see my screen? Not yet. Go ahead and share. Let me know when you're ready. We're ready. Go ahead and share. Julia, do you want to share the screen? Sure. Great, thank you. Good evening, everybody. Uh, Dan Ricciarelli, um, Seeger Architects. I'm here with Julia Meradian from my office. Um, we are the architects for the Holy Family School um, renovations and adaptive use. Um, we're a small firm in Salem, Mass. Um, we've worked with Conley for since 2006, quite a few number of years, and over work on over 750 apartments with them. Um, so we're happy to be here in Rockland um, with this conversion of the, of the former um, Holy Family School to 27 senior affordable housing units. Um, I'll just get right into the overall project. You can see here, this is an aerial view. I'm sure everybody's familiar with this. Um, uh, building it is on Del Preet Street, and it is part of the Holy Family Church complex. And the school is a three-story masonry building built circa 1960, and we are converting it again to 27 senior housing units, all one-bedroom configuration, and basically putting in full accessibility for the building with a buyer and elevator and um, providing two fully accessible units and accessibility to each of the unit entries um, throughout the project and all the public spaces. Um, Julia, can you advance to the next slide? So just a couple of images of the existing site. Um, as part of the project, and we'll show you a slide later on, we will be subdividing a parcel for our use um, away from the church and providing all our own parking and uh, on, on, on site, um, the requirement in town is for one parking space per unit, and we'll be providing um, that one per unit plus nine visitor spaces on our site. Um, and you'll see later in the landscape plans, we are um, creating a complete landscape around the building to soften uh, the building to the neighborhood. Um, top, out, top left photograph is an aerial view um, from Del Priet looking at the building and the middle Upper middle photograph is we're actually providing, this is going to be our new main entrance to the building. Um, I'm sure that Del Preet was an active entrance when it was a school um, as indicated by the crosswalk currently existing, but we feel that the new entrance should be centrally located in the building. There's a stair as you enter into the building and the elevator will be directly ahead. So this was kind of made a lot of sense since this is where the bulk of the parking will be. And just different images, you can see the church there in the background as we move around the building, the Del Preet elevation. Um, this is the existing playground, which will no longer be there, but will be will be landscaping in the future. And the elevation facing the rectory. Um, this is, currently is not accessible. We'll be making this accessible by means of a ramp. 
um, which will be part of the project. Okay, Julia, next. Uh, this is the A&R plan where we're subdividing. Um, we are meeting all the requirements of zoning for this parcel um, as far as square footage and the number of parking spaces and open space. Next. This is the proposed landscape plan and we'll show you some images from Del Pre streets and renderings um, indicating the amount of landscaping that we are providing. And this is an attempt to provide amenity to the tenants um, in the form of um, backyard gardens and sitting areas and planting areas, um, pergola and a fountain and new, lots of landscaping and new trees and plantings in the Del Preet area. Um, as you can see there, we're expanding um, quite a bit on the, um, on the plantings and landscaping on that elevation. There'll be a six foot privacy fence uh, between the abutters at the back of the building, which will remain and we are providing all on-site um, dumpster, trash removal, um, transformer, all electrical requirements and uh, emergency generator for the building. Everything will be very brand new, um, all electrical, mechanical, HVAC, plumbing, and we are fully sprinkling the building, um, which currently is not. Next. And just some uh, rendering images. You can see here, this is from the, looking from Del Preet, the top left image um, at the back, we're, to, we're gonna activate with a new garden and pathway area. There'll be a full walking path around the building for the seniors. Um, we're providing an ample width walk for that to take place. Um, and lots of opportunities for sitting um, and gardening. We're offering um, small garden plots. Um, and you can see along the Del Preet elevation there in the bottom right, um, we're extending the amount of landscaping, which currently has parking all across the front of the building. We'll now be all greenscape, um, walking path and um, gardens. Next. Just a quick overview of the plan. Uh, the top left plan is the first level and this is where all the public amenities will be. We're providing a community room for the tenants with a small library and um, mail room for large packages and small packages and letters and at the near the entrance. We'll be maintaining all the stairs and the corridors um, for the historic tax credits that we'll be um, applying for. Um, so all that will pretty much remain the same. Really the only changes physically in the building will be to adapt the units to, um, from the old schoolhouse um, program. Um, we're also providing uh, common laundry facilities and a workshop for the facilities people. Up on the upper two floors will be most all units, um, one in, one bedroom units, um, one bathroom, and um, two accessible units, one on each floor. Next. Again, all the mechanicals will be shielded on the roof. Um, there'll be nothing down on the ground plane. Um, so this will be um, a huge improvement as we open to all landscaping and um, walking paths around the building. Next. And just again, some images, um, pretty much the outward appearance of the building won't be changing that much um, to the neighborhood. The existing building will be, as you see it today, uh, we, the windows will be will remain. Uh, there'll be a future change out um, possibly, but the windows are in great shape. We'll be providing a new entry canopy at the new main entrance just to give to highlight that more from the parking area. Um, providing again, some landscaping on some of the parking further into the parking lot across from the main entrance. Um, the exterior of the elevation facing the, the rectory will again, just have a ramp and we'll be modifying the canopy to be uh, more up to date and keeping with the canopy that we're providing at the front. So again, no real outward appearance change on the building uh, as it currently exists today, except for the restoration of the facade and masonry repairs. Next. And then these are just images of the building. As you can see, there's very little change. Um, some windows may be added to facilitate the program inside, but in whole, the building pretty much as is. Just some of the amenities we're providing on site as far as seating, uh, fountains, benches, um, six foot um, fencing, uh, pergola for shade devices. And is there one more slide, Julia? And just some of the plantings providing grasses, uh, shrubs, trees, and um, flowering plants that you'll be seeing around the, the, the site. This is just our civil um, plan indicating the parking we'll be providing. We're introducing an, a, a drive aisle um, 
um, which is behind the parking, which is up against the building to allow for easier access into the building for the seniors. Um, so we are, like I said, we're providing 35 spaces total, 27 for a one-to-one -one ratio of one parking space per unit and nine visitor spaces and the extended landscaping along the front. Snow removal and overflow parking will be um, as far as an agreement with the church. Um, so snow removal as it currently exists is uh, one Del Pre will probably either be removed off site or, or placed elsewhere. Next. And I think that's it for the um, architectural. Jennifer, I'll turn it back to you and field any questions. Thank you, Dan. Uh, and Joe, would you like to begin? Absolutely. Thank you, Dan, for that description of our plans for this beautiful historic building in the downtown Rockland area. Before you uh, get started, you Joe, can you um, can, can you stop sharing your screen, um, Julia? Thank you. Can I, uh, you tell me when to proceed, Linda. All clear, Joe, thank you. Great, thank you very much. So as I was saying, thank you to Dan, our team architect and, and Julia for putting together such a great design for the adaptive reuse of this historic building in downtown Rockland. As Rockland citizens know, the downtown is a designated historic area. Uh, they have for a long time been working on um, uh, rehabilitation plans for the entire downtown. It's just part of a uh, general re long-term redevelopment plan, and this will add right into it. Uh, since David uh, could not join us tonight, David DeCoast, the local state representative, I'll, I'll tell you a bit of his involvement. So early on when we had the concept, uh, calling him partners and myself, to turn this now empty building at the time, a former local Roman Catholic uh, school building, into housing, uh, uh, we contacted the state representative's office, asked for his support, and he was very enthusiastic, specifically noting that his office has had as a priority helping uh, downtown redevelopment in historic Rockland. And uh, we had a nice discussion how well this all fit into those plans. Um, uh, David pointed out that the uh, census tract for this building is located in a state opportunity zone. Uh, which helps us on various applications and funding. So it just really ties in with the town of Rockland's overall plan for the downtown area. Now for affordability, we would like to note that all 27 units are going to be chapter 40B additions to the state unit count. Why is that important? Well, often people hear about 40B uh, affordable transactions and they hear that just 25% of the units are going to be affordable for those in low income categories and the rest will be able to be rented for higher rents, whatever the market would bear. That is not the case here. Uh, due to the historic tax credit state and federal we have as additional funding sources, we're able to offer maximum affordability here. So all units, all 27 meet the state affordability guidelines and even lower. Uh, what that means is that actually all 27 units will be restricted to occupancy by those earning under 60% of median income. That's lower than the state 40B 80% threshold. But we, we're doing even better than that. Of those 27, 10 will be in the category of extremely low income, meaning uh, uh, available to residents earning under 30%, HUD's lowest affordability uh, poverty criteria. Uh, in addition, 70% uh, of the units at our initial waiting list will be uh, set aside with a priority for applicants who are from Rockland itself. So I want to be clear to anyone listening here in the rebroadcast, if you're a Rockland citizen you'll, and meet the affordability criteria, you get a priority for one of these units. We're also very happy to cooperate with our friends at the Housing Authority and had a very productive meeting with the uh, director and her team there in Rockland. Uh, and they are uh, looking forward to cooperating with us in, informally on waiting lists so that local people can continue to be uh, referred to our property with Section 8. 
though this property does not have currently, of course, any allocation of Section 8, in addition to the portable vouchers we hope to get referred from the Housing Authority, we will be applying to the state of Massachusetts Department of Housing and Community Development, called the DHCD, for 10 project-based Section 8 units. To be clear, that's a little different than the portable vouchers administered by good friends at the Housing Authority. The portable voucher can be used in any unit with a willing landlord. With these 10, they'll be contractually obligated just to our property. So for instance, if someone didn't have any Section 8 and they showed up at the local housing authority saying, I'm low income, I need some senior housing, but I don't have a voucher, is there anything in town? Well, if we had one of those units vacant with our own project-based Section 8, that tenant could be served. So uh, from that description, I, we hope to convey the Conley & Partners team that we're shooting for maximum affordability and in perpetuity. That means that the property, as a condition of getting the state assistance we're applying for to, to redevelop this beautiful property, uh, it means that we will be obligated by deed restriction to only serve affordable clients into the future forever. It's a legal deed restriction. doesn't matter who owns the property 100 years in the future. It will be affordable housing. Uh, and our approach lastly, will be a friendly 40B, otherwise called local initiative. What's the difference? Well, with a standard 40B, uh, the developer can go against the wishes of the local community uh, and appeal directly to the state. We are not doing that. We stress we are not. From the start, we went to local officials and to the state representative, and we said, we don't do that kind of deal. We only want to do what the community wants us to do. And we made our pitch to the town. And again, we're very happy with the Board of Selectmen and the town manager's office and their responsiveness to, to our goals. Uh, again, they appropriately withheld formal approval, of course, until we have several more um, uh, hearings and until the citizens hear more about this. But they did relate to us that they love the concept, they wish us the best in our applications for funding, and that they believe it would be a nice addition to the town, town, historic Rockland area. And with that, I'll turn it back to you, Jennifer. Jennifer? Thank you, Joe. Thank you, yeah. Joe. Uh, this is a great chance for us to answer any questions that the community has about the Schoolhouse Apartments Rockland. Our owner, William Conley, is here together with Linda Hamilton. She oversees our management group. We also have Donna Burke-Smith. She's our senior property manager and the director of facilities, Kent Grimsley. So with that, we'd like to open it to the public for questions and comments. Well, if you're watching this um, on the cable rebroadcast, uh, we are going to have a second session in April um, and we'll be putting together that information shortly and we hope to see you then. Thank you. That was great, Jennifer. Good oh, very job. good. Good job. I think, I, are we all set then? I think we're all set. There weren't very many. There was only one person from um, from outside of our team and um, they didn't appear to have any questions. Um, AC, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to talk to us. And tell your friends on April 28th, we'll have an, a similar session and despite the fact we did reach out to various community bulletin boards, we understand during these times it's difficult to get the word out. Uh, we hope the next time to get word into uh, the print newspaper uh, as well as uh, a butter notices to the immediate neighbors. Again, this is the first of, of likely four meetings. We just wanted to get the ball rolling. And again, this will be rebroadcast on the local cable television station uh, we are, and appreciate their their support to get the word out. 